Okay. Benvenuti a tutti a Bit of History 2018, eh, mi alzo in piedi così magari mi vedete meglio. Faccio una piccola introduzione in italiano perché dato eh, il carisma e la portata internazionale, è acceso? Si sente bene? Ok, adesso è a posto. Dicevo appunto, dato la provenienza internazionale dei nostri ospiti faremo questa tavola rotonda assolutamente in inglese per poter eh, dialogare anche con loro che non conoscono l'italiano. E vado quindi a presentare le persone che sono qua per questa tavola rotonda, scusate ma dovrò leggere perché mi sono preparata abbastanza poco, e soprattutto il nome di Sveto Zar Nikolic, Sveto, ok, Sveto è più facile, eh, il fondatore del museo Pick and Poke di eh, Rieca, fiume in italiano. Abbiamo Yves Bolognini, che è il fondatore del museo Bolò di Lausanne, abbiamo... Marco Cristanini, che è il curatore del Museo del Dipartimento di Informatica dell'Università di Verona, e soprattutto Marco Boglione, cavaliere merito al lavoro, ben conosciuto da tutti, direi, qua a Torino soprattutto. E vado quindi a cambiare lingua e partiamo in inglese con alcune domande a Marco Boglione. So Marco, uh, where does your passion for the informatic revolution start? It started uh, in January uh, 1975 at school, when uh, I was attending uh, the high school, the last year of the high school, my high school, and um, a teacher, which was a passionate uh, mathematic guy and teaching physical, And um, he showed us um, a, a, news, a, a magazine, an American magazine, the popular electronics at that time. He was, uh, it was this professor was really, uh, he was a priest, and he was really a special guy. It's still around in, on the internet. It's uh, Fratel Roberto Sitia, you can read. And he gave us a, a, a trailer or a, you know, a vision, a picture of how the world could have been changed by these new technologies. And, uh, and everything started there, actually. We are sorry we have to change uh, the microphone. Yeah. It's uh, almost homemade. <laughs> So I would like to know also, why did you choose the period between 1975 and 1985 for your project? Because 1975, uh, I just said why. It was 1975. And, uh, and that newspaper, that, that, that magazine, the, the popular electronics was so uh, very well dated and, uh, and uh, actually Uh, motivated um, not only me, okay? And uh, 85 is because uh, is when Steve Jobs left uh, the first time Apple. He was fired after the, the flop of, uh, of, of the Macintosh uh, launching in, 90, in 84. And, um, and for, for us, for me, for us, it was a big shame because uh, he failed for many other reasons than uh, he was a bad product, he was a super product. Uh, but, and so it was somehow like losing uh, um, a fight unfairly, unfairly. <laughs> and so he left, he was fired, uh, and that, that was a momentum. In, uh, in, uh, in, in the same time, i think that that decade can be considered the, the real uh, important decade uh, uh, if we consider uh, uh, what came after as a revolution, which is still going on. But those 10 years were made, uh, uh, w w w the, the starting of all that. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, and I would like to know. Sorry. Hmm? Okay, wonderful. 
We have also online Mark Weber from the Computer History Museum in US, connected by Skype. So, should be already there. It's going to connect. I would like also to know, and finally, final question, is uh, how your project is uh, going on, how you develop your project, and how you, you are trying to, 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 to bring up uh, your idea and your revolution. Um, the, you know, I'm one of those many, actually, now, we can say, guys, that who made their life thanks to these new technologies. I was able to work, to be successful, to somehow realize my visions more than what it was possible eventually before. And so the, the will of doing something is, is not f for, for what is, is, is concerned the technology. I, I don't care very much about uh, the machines. Uh, but I think that we have been going through a revolution um, since quite a long time, 30, 40 years. And we can also see as this revolution is just at the beginning. So I think it's important, uh, while we're still in, to know the cultural side of this revolution, not only the technical, who cares about the technical, but those guys like Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, uh, and friends, they were always talking about changing the world. And they were talking about a noble cause, not to make money. Uh, we, we've been interviewing for this uh, passion a lot of guys of those years in the States, and they keep on reporting that the, the talks between those guys at that time was not a business-oriented talk. They wanted to empower the people. They wanted to give freedom to everybody, to assess the news, to assess the information. And remember this, the, the, the AD spot of the Macintosh launching against the IBM power, you know? And, and so this is something that has to be kept, according to me, because it's something uh, which is going to stay in the culture of young guys more than the latest technologies that in three days is changed and is important. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to, to come to, to ask some questions to the museum's leader and founders. And I am super partners, you know, I'm the president of the European Society for Computers Preservation, so I'm super partners, I don't think. <laughs> For nobody. So, uh, I would like to, to ask you uh, what impact uh, to the public your museum has in uh, your location. We have a museum from Croatia, one from Switzerland, and one in Italy. And also, naturally, the host of the, of the event, which is the Mupin Museo Piemontese dell'Informatica. We don't have to forget them. So, uh, what's the impact your museum is going to is having in the public in your country? Hello, uh, buongiorno. Scusa, uh, io, uh, I understand almost all every word of Italian, but I can speak Italian. So sorry again. Uh, and also, my English is not perfect. I'll do my best to explain. Uh, me and my friend Tomislav Ribicic, uh, we found uh, the Pick and Pop Museum in 2007 and uh, we managed some letter of, uh, to our mayor of Rijeka, Fiume. Uh, we would like to make the computer museum in Rijeka and uh, okay, he said very well, just do it and uh, we opened the museum in 2007. Both me and my friend we were the collectionists. We bought many, many of this stuff by eBay, flea market, garbage, of course. And uh, there's a nice story that uh, my wife, my kid, my mom, and uh, 300 computers we lived in our apartment. So this is the, some kind of the sickness. And uh, after that, my wife said, okay, that is classical blackmail. 
me or them, and the pick and poke is the, the solution. And this uh, 10 years, or 11 now, uh, pick and poke is uh, recognized in Rijeka like the tourist attraction, and uh, except the, the, the museum, uh, our association, non-profit association works many, many cultural events like the concerts, uh, workshops, and many, 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 many more things. Uh, now, I must say that uh, our museum is the, on the number, number one place on the trip, a trip advisor of what to see in Rijeka, so you are all invited to visit us during this summer. It will be my pleasure to see you in Fiume. Okay, hello. Um, I prepared a presentation. I don't know if we will have. Uh, I prepared a presentation. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah, it will. Be, okay. Later. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I won't. I won't say too much now because there are lots of things I want to say after that. Um, so yes, um, the, the, the the Bolo Museum was, um, was founded in 2002 in Lausanne, in the um, uh, Ecole Polytechnique, a polytechnical school in, in Lausanne. Um, actually, we are independent from the school, uh, but the school gives us the place for the, for the exhibit, the permanent exhibit. Uh, it started with my personal collection. I started in 1995 to collect computers, and um, we now have an association, and also a foundation because uh, uh, we wanted to, to go further and to, um, uh, to professionalize our activity. And uh, for that, we needed some money. So we founded this foundation in 2007. And I gave my personal collection to the foundation. Uh, so now we are more like a museum, even if we are all volunteers, of course. But, um, but yes, we have a quite a large collection, one of the largest in Europe with about uh, 5,000 uh, computers. Um, and I had the same problem as Sveto with the uh, start of the collection. Uh, my wife, uh, I met my wife in 1996 and I had nine, nine, uh, nine computers in my collection. And so nine, now 5,000, so you can imagine how you know, in the couple, sometimes it was up, sometimes it was down. <laughs> and uh, when the, all the computers were in one place, not in the apartment, it was much better. <laughs> um, yes. About, maybe about the impact, uh, the, that was the question. Um, uh, I think there are several parts, uh, the several answers. First, maybe the impact for Switzerland and for the local region. When we're around Lausanne, uh, because there is uh, some heritage to preserve, uh, Swiss heritage and regional heritage, because maybe you don't know, but, but there was Swiss computers built, and so uh, it is an important part for us is to uh, preserve this heritage. Um, another impact for, uh, is of course for the public, for the, the visitors of the museum. Uh, it can be for kids, but also for uh, uh, old people. <laughs> um, maybe old people are more nostalgic and kids are more discovering new things, new, the, the history of computing. Um, uh, I guess I will tell, tell more after that. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here with the uh, all these uh, great uh, persons about information science. And uh, um, I have to say that um, the, um, um, computer, the computer, the information science museum at uh, the information science department of Verona University is not a, a, public, a public museum. Um, so uh, the target is, uh, is a little, a little target. Uh, I mean, uh, the target of people visiting is mainly composed by uh, schools and uh, associations uh, that um, are interested in, uh, in um, collect, uh, collect uh, computers and uh, other stuff about the history of computers. And uh, uh, the, this museum is growing slowly for this reason. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, the speed will, uh, will increase in future. Uh, I mean, um, 
some days uh, the, the, the museum is opened for families, for example. And uh, so uh, uh, um, we hope that in future we can organize uh, uh, bigger and bigger events where people come, uh, can come to visit the museum uh, during all days and uh, all night too, because we, uh, we'd like to, to start a project uh, where, uh, where people can, uh, can visit the museum during the night. And um, I'd like to say that um, I, I think an important, um, the main important thing is that uh, collaboration uh, with the uh, Verona territory, uh, because this is the, 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 the crucial uh, thing. Uh, for example, uh, the Comune, de Ver Comune di Verona, uh, there is a, a collaboration with, uh, with, uh, with it. And uh, this is uh, uh, a powerful thing for the museum. And, uh, uh, many, many associations are uh, more and more interested in, uh, uh, in the field of uh, uh, diffusing uh, science culture. Uh, so the project of, uh, uh, the project of uh, department, uh, the computer science department, is uh, uh, to diffuse uh, science culture. And uh, uh, so the, the, the museum exposition is uh, is, uh, uh, is not the main, uh, the main thing. Is one of, of the important things about the museum, but not the main. The main thing is to, uh, uh, to, to send, uh, to, send uh, to people, uh, let the people understand and know um, the concepts that uh, uh, sometimes are uh, for, uh, forgotten. Because, uh, because the speed of, uh, of technology and innovation is, uh, is very, very high. And so uh, the museum represents uh, uh, represent a, a contact with the, with the past. And uh, this is, uh, this is uh, uh, the, the main the main. The, the, it is the main thing. It is the, 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 the concept that... Uh, that uh, make the museum alive, uh, take a link with the past to look to the future. And uh, the museum is, in, is, uh, is um, in a place where research is done. So from one side, the research is the look to the future. On the other side, there's the compl complementary uh, direction of the view. That is the past, the, the, what happened in the past. And, um, uh, I'd like to say many things about uh, our project because the um, museum started with a little, little project, as, as a little project, but it is uh, increasing more and more. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. So, now we have Mark Weber from the Computer History Museum connected with us. Are you with us, Mark? I, I, can hear, I can't hear you. Our technicians uh, are working very hard to make the connection possible. Yeah, possible. Can you, uh, <laughs> I don't see it. Can add something? Can Maybe. Uh, to me that uh, he can uh, hear us. He can hear us, but we can't hear yeah. him. Us. Mark? No. Can you hear me? No. I think that uh, yeah. while you are trying to, to perfectionate the connection, I can. We can start with the presentations. Oh. Yeah? Okay. So we will start with the yes, presentations of, uh, of, the, of the museums. And I think uh, you, you decide the order for me is uh, absolutely. No, you, you are, you are the, the host in Italy, so before our for guests. Sure, okay? Sure. Yeah? Sure, <laughs> okay, so. Okay. Okay, so I will try to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oops, no. This one. Yeah. Much better. Yes, okay, um, I will try to be. Ah, what? Ah, okay. Excellent. So the name, the name of the museum we chose, uh, Pick and Poke, by uh, 
to be ordered in computer language basic, but also pick and poke meaning in the English slang, like taking a look and like poke someone. In our museum, you can touch everything. Uh, sorry, which button is for the next? No? No? Hmm? Nope? Please. Okay. So this is the, we opened the 22nd of uh, September 2007 and it was a huge media intention. Please, next. Okay, uh, I will not speak about the Commodore 64, Apple, and something that, uh, something like that. I will speak about former Yugoslavia computer. Um, from history, Croatia was a part of Yugoslavia. This is the border of former Yugoslavia. And I choose not the name of the republic, but now today's domain of the web. So, .se is meaning Slovenia, .hr is Croatia, .ba is Bosnia and Herzegovina, dot me is Montenegro, dot uh, rs is Republic of Serbia, and uh, mk is Macedonia. It's very interesting that every republic uh, in former Yugoslavia had own computer production. And of course, this is the place where is the pick and poke is in Rijeka. Next slide, please. So, I started, uh, I just uh, speak with my friend Eve, uh, we had many, 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 many companies who produce the computers, and I choose just a couple of the, the, the factories. Uh, this Iskra from uh, Kranj is still existing company, one of the rare who survived this globalization, and Gorenje, someone is uh, popular by uh, white technique for the kitchen, like the refrigerator and something like that. Institute Josef Stefan is the, the uh, different story. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, Iskra is founded on 1948 uh, and beginning with 8, 850 workers and in the best time uh, Iskra have 35,000 employees. Uh, they produce uh, uh, electronic equipment, tools and many, many more. Next please. Uh, the one of the first computer was uh, built by Iskra in 1961. You will see on the ferry modern electronics in Ljubljana this computer here. And this computer from Iskra is made for the export in 1981. Uh, uh, it's very, very huge. It's similar. They have the uh, two floppy, eight inch floppy disk and very, very heavy. And the most popular from Iskra computers is this Delta Partner in the 1983 and Iskra Triglav in the late of the 80s. And Triglav is meaning, uh, it's the highest mountain in Slovenia, is meaning three head. Dot me, uh, Misedo is the same like the TRS-80 uh, color computer, it's produced in Ivangrad, today uh, this city is named the Berane. Uh, they are produced by license of the Tendi Radio Shack. Energo Invest from Bosnia and Herzegovina is the one of the is the biggest company ever in former Yugoslavia. They have the 42,000 employees. Uh, during the lifetime, this company produced a power plant, hydro plant, and of course, computer. Uh, this computer is Iris 8. It's from uh, early 80s, and this is uh, computer is Apple II clones, and after that uh, is Iris 16, middle of 80s from. IBM clones. Uh, uh, Serbia, this is the name of the company, Mihailo Bupin, a niche. a niche is still exists. All of these companies now dead. And uh, Mihailo Pupin uh, is also is interesting today because they've uh, produced the first computer in former Yugoslavia. It's in model CER, CER 10. Uh, this is the, the guys who uh, produced this computer. And it's very, very interesting that latest version of this computer, Yugoslavia made for esp espionia, espionia, espionage, for spying, sorry, uh, Israel, in the, during the Arab, Israel Arab War in the uh, 1960s. This guy is still alive, he's my friend, Voy Antonich. Uh, he made uh, the Ga Galaxy or Galaxia computer, home computer. 
Uh, now he lives in uh, Pasadena in USA, and I think it's, uh, he brings the One Galaxy to Computer History Museum in San Francisco. Uh, uh, this guy and the, the, the Dejan Ristanovic, they, uh, they start to publish the, the first uh, computer magazine. It's called the uh, Rationari or Computers. And with this magazine, we learn our first basic or programming and so on. And uh, this galaxy is the one of the popular computer in former Yugoslavia. Uh, the first galaxy is, uh, arrived in the kit just like Apple I, okay, there we have not Apple I value, and the boy Antonich decided, okay, let's do it, the final version, and this is the factory version of the Galaxia. Ele uh, ele electronic industry niche is still existing company. It's very, very popular. They produce the television, radio set, hi-fi, and also computers. Uh, Pecom 64 uh, is produced in 1985, and the two models with a 64 kilobyte of memory and 32 kilobyte of memory. And this one is the copy of uh, IBM PC clone, uh, Lira. And it was on the late of the 80s. The, the war is coming on the <laughs> horizon. Uh, it's my republic, Croatia, Radio Industry Zagreb, Calculating Machine Factory, Digit Rambuje, Pel Varaždin, and Ivan, uh, Ivanic Grad Ivasim. And this one is our pride because, um, so I will try to explain, I don't know the Italian, I will um, tr uh, try to make compare. Uh, when you are in the USA and you put the, in the bankomat the card, uh, the American citizen used the word, I go to ATM machine. ATM is the name of the company, but this word is just like the Xerox word. Uh, Xerox is replaced all photocopying machines in the world. And in former uh, Yugoslavia, and still now, we use the word Digitron for any calculators in the world. The reason is, in the 1971, the engineer from the Buje in uh, Croatia, they made the first pocket calculator with the display in the Europe. So, these three guys, but two guys are very, very uh, important. There is uh, Miroslav Kocian and Branimir Makanec. He is still alive, 88 years now. Have, and they uh, made the first, they are really, really first computer pioneers in the, uh, Croatia. The Miroslav Kocian produced the Galeb, or meaning seagull, in the beginning of the 80s. It produces only 200 uh, pieces. And uh, then the Miroslav Kocian said, okay, let's make a better model of this Galeb. And he produced the aura, or meaning eagle, in the 1984. Uh, this was a very, very popular computer in school, elementary school in Croatia and uh, Vojvodina. Vojvodina is a part of Serbia. It was out autumn region. Uh, but in that time, uh, I just explained to my friend Eve, uh, aura was never survive at home compu computers, just only on the school, because we have Commodore 64 and ZX Spectrum and many, many, many Western computers. Uh, Branimir Makanec, you will see, he is, uh, is visiting Pick and Poke. He have this computer, this Minivac 601 from 1961. This is not Croatian or Yugoslavian uh, computers, but is there, there is the nice story. Uh, Yugoslavia was the communist country, and in that time it was illegal to import computers, and uh, he told me that uh, the government in the 1960s forbid him to import this computer, and he jumped to, you know, to problem, and he bought uh, manuals of this computer, and by this manual he connected the own computer. On this manual he produced the, this computer, Evil Ultra, or uh, Evil, uh, yes, Evil Ultra. Evil Ultra was the Apple II clone, in the days, uh, arrived in the two, two versions with the tin, the cables, and the fat cables. And this is the last product from uh, this guy, Mr. Uh, Evil Z3. It was very, very rare, even in Croatia. I know only for this piece of history, not only for Croatia, but here, because the people in the late of the 90s, they're throwing in the garbage and so on and so on.
And the last is calculating machines. This is the radio industry Zagreb. They produce uh, the calculators, mechanical calculators, and of course, the PC. So, I said Macedonia or Macedonia, uh, I tell, uh, told for this computer, this computer is like the Schrodinger's cat. Why? Because uh, I know that this computer exists, but I never saw this computer in uh, my life, in, uh, in live. And also, when you put this name of this computer in Google, Google will say you zero results. But, update. Next. I found finally the pictures in the, the one magazines. The Marta is uh, produced in Macedonia and coming in the wooden case. And this is the Apple clone. Thank you very much. And uh, see you in Croatia. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Very kind. <laughs> so, Eva, it's up to you to. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we forgot something. Sorry, yes. And uh, last year we uh, celebrated our 10th anniversary and we uh, published a book about the history in computing in Rijeka. It's very, very nice. Okay, it's also only on creation. Uh, it's, uh, there is a nice story about smuggling a stuff from the Western in the 60s and 70s in Rijeka and a pioneer of uh, uh, computing in Croatia. So this book, I know the Elia will not understand, but this is the small gift for organizer of this beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much. So you're welcome. <laughs> See you. Wonderful. I have to study Croatians, huh? <laughs> I have to study Croatian then. The nice pictures are very nice. The pictures, okay, I got it. <laughs> so now it's up to Yves to tell us something about the wonderful Bolo Museum in Lausanne. And up to you. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's coming. Yes. Um, can take the this one and go. so you know who I am. Okay, no problem. Okay, so uh, I will start to uh, a little bit about about the Bolo Museum. You already know a little bit, but I. We'll give some, some details. Uh, background, the collection uh, association in 2001. This association is still very active. They, they meet at least uh, once a week, uh, every Tuesday night. And uh, there are like 40 members, but 10 to 12 who are very active and uh, meeting every Tuesday, at least, because there are also many uh, weekends <laughs> to um, make the computer works, to organize events, to do a lot of things with the, with the machines. Uh, the museum in 2002, foundation 2007, like I said before. Um, the idea of the collection is to uh, uh, tell the story of digital. Look, it's not only uh, tell the story of the technology, uh, as you said before, <laughs> you, you, we also want to, to tell the story of the, of the society um, linked to the technology and to, to tell the story of the whole digital, not only of the computer itself. Uh, content, so we have the, the computers and peripherals, software documentation magazines, of course, uh, some numbers, 5,000 computers and, and game consoles. Uh, yes, we also have game consoles because the, the video games is an important part also of the history of computing. And software, books, like tons of books and magazines. So each time I put some pictures, uh, here you have myself in 2001 uh, with a, a new uh, storage uh, that was like three to 400 uh, square meters. It was empty and now it's not empty. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it's full of, not, not junk, full of beautiful computers. Uh, partners, so we, we work together with the association, the foundation, and the location itself, which is the museum, but it's not uh, only the visible part of the uh, activities. Um, the association, as I said, is for preservation, inventory, um, organizing events, 
the foundation is more for long-term projects and for um, uh, fund fundraising. Uh, locations. So we have the museum itself. Uh, it's located at the EPFL, so the Polytechnic School in Lausanne, and uh, also a workshop there where we can work and make the machine works. And two storage spaces, and altogether about 500 square meters. Uh, here you have uh, one volunteer uh, during a, a guided tour in the museum. Um, below, um, in between is uh, Jean-Daniel Nicou. Jean-Daniel Nicou is a professor who built the, the, the SMACI. Uh, I will tell you more about the SMACI later. It was a computer uh, built in, a, uh, in Lausanne. And that was quite successful, but only in the schools, uh, a bit like the Oro before uh, the Croatian computer. Um, and below, yes, yeah, it's an association with my two sons, <laughs> because my sons are also interested in old computers. <laughs> okay. Huh, bad batteries. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so the, the question that uh, Elia <laughs> asked was, why is the museum important? So, I will tell you. So, uh, as I said before, uh, first thing is that it is important for the region, for Switzerland, um, for preservation of the local computer history. For instance, the famous uh, Smacky, uh, all the Smackies, we have all the Smackies, all the prototypes also. All together, it's uh, 19 different computers uh, and prototypes. Uh, the, the mouse also, so you know that the mouse is a very important Swiss history because the invent invention, uh, it, it was in, in, the, um, in the States, uh, Douglas Engelbart invented the mouse, but uh, the mouse was developed in Switzerland and uh, of course then sold by Logitech. Um, so this one here. I like to bring uh, physical stuff uh, <laughs> at my presentation. So this is, this is the, the, the first uh, mouse sold by Logitech, uh, the beginning of the 80s. Um, but before Logitech, uh, it was sold by a company whose name is, um, uh, which name is Depra. And uh, the, this Depra mouse, at this time, around 81, it was the only mouse that was sold in the world. So, uh, for about one or two years, it was the, uh, in Switzerland, it was the, 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 the only mouse sold. Then Logitech, then uh, Macintosh, then etc. And also, yes, uh, interesting is that uh, Depra, the, this company, was um, a company uh, who built um, uh, watches because they needed some mechanical uh, technology, you know, to build this mouse. So it was a uh, watch, watch company, Logitech. Um, so I told you about preservation, but for, for Switzerland, we also, uh, we not only uh, preserve uh, hardware, but also software and data. Uh, this is quite important because one um, activity of this association is also to uh, take data from old um, uh, disks, for, for instance, and put it in a new uh, format for people, for private uh, person, also for companies who need to preserve this data. Uh, just one, mo one more thing about this, li this slide. Um, I'm, uh, Yes, this collaboration, uh, this is heritage, pro uh, heritage pro preservation is for uh, also silicon graphics because we, 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 um, we had in, in Switzerland the, 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 the uh, how do you say that, the, 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 the place where they built the silicon graphics for Europe until 2001. And they closed this facility, it was close to, to, to Lausanne, and they closed it in 2001. And we uh, preserved a lot of silicon graphics computer, maybe one of the largest or the largest uh, collection of silicon graphics in the world. 
Um, also, CERN, what is interesting here is that, uh, uh, as I said, we preserve hardware, but also data. And in this case, the association uh, was called by the CERN to preserve the data of the first web server. Uh, you know that uh, Tim Berners-Lee invented the, the web in the CERN, in, CERN, in, um, in Geneva. And uh, they had to preserve the data of the disk of the first next computer where was the first web server. And so our association had the competencies to do that and who was called by a CERN. So I think this is an important part of the job of our museum, is not only preservation, but also keep the, those competencies to be able to do something like that. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I won't tell everything. <laughs> uh, we have collaboration with APFL, of course, we are there and we collaborate with them for guided tools, etc. And also we had some collaboration with Logitech. Uh, below here is the um, uh, inauguration of a temporary exhibit we had until last year for the 35 years of Logitech. Um, and you have a, a president of APFL and Daniel Borel, who is the founder of Logitech, and myself. <laughs> Uh, maybe something also about supercomputers, because at the PFL they had uh, a lot of supercomputers, including the Cray 2 up there, that was the fastest computer in the world in 1985. And uh, we were lucky enough to, to preserve this machine, which is now in the, in the museum. Uh, it's uh, like $20 uh, million dollars machine. And uh, it's uh, uh, not as... Uh, it's slower than an iPad 2, not the latest Apple, uh, iPad, not the iPad 2, yeah. And one member of the association is uh, working on the first uh, web server, the next cube. Yeah, okay. I could talk a lot, so I have to go faster. <laughs> Um, also important for uh, researchers and artists, uh, res researchers, we have now um, um, a team of uh, researchers uh, coming from uh, University of Lausanne um, because we were lucky to, to, uh, to have a very nice collection of uh, video games. Uh, that was given to us by Bruno Bonnel. Bruno Bonnel is the founder of Infogram, who was a very uh, uh, well-known uh, editing uh, company for video games in France. And uh, this guy gave us uh, 3,000 uh, video games, uh, sealed and new. So it's quite a collection. <laughs> and those researchers from the University of Lausanne are working on this collection to uh, preserve it and to um, um, use it to sh uh, for, for research of, uh, uh, about video games. Also, one, uh, um, one woman is now working on uh, the Scrib. Uh, portable computer, who was, uh, which was a, a very nice uh, uh, laptop with uh, squats, <laughs> laptop of uh, seven, 1978, uh, eight kilograms. Uh, <laughs> but uh, she is working and um, soon uh, writing a book about this machine. So this woman is coming to the museum to have the information to write the book. So it's important that this information is kept in the museum. Also, we have a, a lot of uh, uh, artists coming to the museum for pictures, for projects like this one here uh, that was about transparency, transparency in objects. So there is a chair <laughs> that is transparent, but also Mac computers that were transparent. So, yeah. And Bruno Bonnel, up there it's uh, uh, two um, musicians that uh, are uh, creating music with old computers. So we helped them use a Macintosh, which is uh, uh, the only thing that was uh, lightened up up there. <laughs> yeah. And of course, it's important for the public. Yeah, it's a museum, so we have, we, we like to have visitors. <laughs> so this is not only for geeks, it's very important for us. Uh, we want to have all ages, and we have, to, of course, to have schools. Uh, so, in 2011, we created this uh, new exhibit uh, that is uh, up there line, um, on the left. Um, the idea was to have uh, something very for a large public, a broad public. 
Um, so we found this subject of the exhibit was the disappearance of the computer. That of course, the computer is everywhere, but it's also disappearing because it's getting smaller and smaller. And so it was like, a, uh, um, yes, we, we, we made this uh, exhibit about this subject, and it's, it was a way of uh, uh, displaying our, our collection, uh, telling the story of computing, but with something quite, um, uh, yes, for a broad public and not, not only for geeks. Um, and also, we wrote this book about the disappearance of the computer, and uh, a second book for you. <laughs> Plenty of books. <laughs> um, okay. If you want the book, you can buy it on your stand. Um, at special events uh, in the museum itself, at festivals like this one, uh, other special events at companies, or companies also. Uh, okay. We want to have working machines with software and documentation, or also this side of video games, which is important. Also via other museum, we have uh, other museum asking us to, to lend them uh, computers or, or anything. Um, uh, mice went to a, a museum in Lausanne, um, yeah, displayed some mice for, for a temporary, temporary exhibit. Uh, so it's a way to, uh, for instance, the, the Smacky 6 is now is in a permanent exhibit uh, in a history museum in, in Lausanne, history of Lausanne. So it's interesting because they, they also um, need computers to explain the history, the global history of the region. So it's important for us. Yeah. And now, yeah, last slide, and now. <laughs> What are we, uh, what are we, where are we going with the Bolo Museum? Uh, current situation, it's not easy because um, we need money. <laughs> we, we have to rent the, um, the local storage uh, since last year. Before that, it was uh, free for us, but since last year, we have to rent it. So we have to find a lot of money. And that's why we decided to, uh, to uh, start a new project. Uh, a very ambitious project to find a lot of money, not only the, the money we need to, uh, to rent the, the local storage, uh, the storage. And um, uh, yeah, so this uh, new museum, uh, it, 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 uh, the project uh, just started, and the, the idea is to have yes, more than an evolution of technology, like I said before, uh, to have the link between the society and computers, and to talk about the past, the present, but, only, uh, uh, the, uh, but also the future. The project starting right now, we have some political support, but it's only the beginning, um, and we'll, we, we want to have public and private funding. So, next step. A new museum, uh, if everything goes well, it will be in 2021. So, <laughs> you're welcome to Lausanne. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yves. Now, after we're having understood and opened, stood, uh, but surely seen some wonders from the uh, ex Yugoslavia and from the Switzerland, we give the word to an Italian curator of museum. Marco, it's up to you. Mm. Can I start? Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody. And um, as I told you before in my short uh, presentation, uh, I am a curator of a museum the Museum of Information Science Department of Verona University. Uh, it is a project uh, that uh, begins in uh, 207. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, AICA, Associazione Italiana Calcolo Automatico, thought to organized in uh, all over Italy a, a course, a university course in uh, uh, information science history. And ICA uh, chose 
uh, 11 universities. One of these university, uh, one of these universities is Verona. And uh, the, the, the person who thought to build up a museum is a professor of uh, Verona University. His name is uh, Vincenzo Manca. Uh, Vincenzo Manca is a professor of uh, bioinformatics and uh, he is the president of uh, uh, the center of uh, uh, bioinformatics and uh, research. And uh, uh, the, the, this, uh, this professor has, uh, has, uh, was one of the, of the teacher of the uh, information science course. And uh, um, one of the main person who uh, contributed to the, the construction of the museum uh, was uh, uh, Alfio Andronico, uh, an information science professor too, and uh, Corrado Bonfanti, uh, a professor of ICA. And uh, uh, museum, uh, museum suddenly, suddenly grow very, very, very quickly. And the uh, museum starts with a few, few, uh, with a few objects uh, in cases. And uh, starting from 211, a uh, department thought to, uh, to ask a curator to handle the museum. Uh, this is the main, the main, uh, the main thing, the, main, uh, the, the, the power thinking for the museum because uh, um, uh, the curator um, did a very, a very uh, important work. The main, the main work was to collect and save from distractions many uh, computers. And many times I was uh, called and uh, asked me to, for asking me to, to save objects. And uh, uh, one of the last objects I, I, I was uh, proud to save is a IBM System 36 and completely. And uh, obviously, obviously uh, the, I have to say that uh, the engineer who used this computer saved it and closed it in a room for 20 years. I mean, uh, he closed the computer and uh, because he, hope, he hoped that uh, in future, someone will save this computer, and it, uh, this happened. So the, ma the main, the main uh, task of the computer, the main task of the computer is the, is the collection of, uh, of uh, computers, not all in computers, uh, books, uh, software, uh, newspapers, uh, encyclopedias, and uh, all. All, uh, all the things that uh, uh, runs around the uh, history of computer science. And uh, uh, so in future we have, uh, we have many, many, uh, many projects about uh, the evolution of the museum. Uh, after the, the, object, the object were saved, the, 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 main thing, the main thing to do was to uh, clean the object test the object, and try to repair the objects. And uh, now we have some computers that we like to try uh, to work with. Uh, let, let the, we are trying to uh, repair this computer, and we are collaborating with many, many museums. Uh, so I'd like to say, as I told you before, Collaboration is uh, the main, the main thing uh, in this in this environment. So, I, I say I, I'd like to say thank you again with uh, uh, to to Mupin all <laughs> because uh, uh, there is a friendship and uh, a collaboration that is growing uh, year after year, and I hope that it will grow more and uh, it will be uh, uh, always. Uh, 
uh, full of, uh, of important uh, um, projects to collaborate to, um, for collaborating. And so, collection of objects, uh, clean, clean, clean up of objects, re, uh, re repairing of objects, and so an exposition. But as I told you before, uh, exposition, thank you very much. The exposition is not the main, the main, the main thing. The main, th the main thing is the, uh, is the, the, the diffusion of, of uh, uh, scientific culture. Uh, so museum take advantage of uh, an exposition to do this. Exposition is not uh, the target, the final target. And uh, 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 please, thank you for oh, thank you very much. Um, in this picture, uh, I, I, I collect some of the of the of the main uh, historical objects that will be collected during the years. Uh, at the left uh, left corner, up left corner, we can see uh, we can see a set of uh, IBM hard disks, and. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, these are disks. The are disks are very, very rare. Uh, very rare because uh, because uh, it's, it's, it's impossible to find them uh, so so easily. And uh, they were to be uh, to be um, to be. They were to be, they, they were going to be destructed. Uh, and uh, for, for, fortunately, we, we had the time to, uh, during evening, uh, to collect them and uh, bring them in, uh, to the department. And uh, we, bu we bought, uh, uh, for all of them, uh, particular cases. Cases with light and uh, air, uh, and, um, air flow. And so uh, this is one of the last uh, work we done, we did. Uh, at the bottom of the, at the, cent the center picture at the bottom, the, uh, you, 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 can you can see uh, part of the uh, mobile laboratory uh, because uh, not only, so after we have, we have uh, uh, the showcase, and people can come to see the, the, thing, uh, the things exposed in the museum. Uh, there is a, a more than this, as I told you. There is a, a, a mobile laboratory uh, where a computer we repair that can be used, and the people who come to visit the museum can touch and use. And uh, childs, so when comes and see these kind of computers, um, they really... Uh, have big eyes <laughs> on them because <coughs> they are surprised to see how different is, uh, is uh, the technology. Now they are used, obviously, they, are, they, they use a technology very uh, powerful. <laughs> but uh, at that time, uh, there, are, there, there, there were very, very different, uh, um, there are different systems, but uh, uh, Systems that uh, signed the change of an era. Uh, so, collect, repair, collect, clean, repair, uh, show objects, uh, prepare a laboratory, mobile laboratory, because the laboratory uh, um, must be mobile because the uh, environment is not so wide. Uh, very, very, little, very little rooms uh, to. Uh, where, you, where, where we can uh, we can uh, perform a, a laboratory, and so uh, and uh, many activities. So uh, every time the laboratory must be must be moved where possible, and uh, this is the second the second thing. A, a mobile laboratory where, where we can effectively um, uh, diffuse culture science with with, with different uh, different uh, paths. Of, uh, of uh, science subjects. For example, we use the Commodore 64 uh, for a laboratory 
uh, concerning uh, micro programming micro programming and uh, uh, people is very very uh, very interested in this uh, the, the, the last thing I'd like to say to you, uh, and uh, I think that is uh, not the least, uh, is that uh, uh, museum points to um, open the doors to people who have uh, disabilities. Uh, people who have disabilities can come, touch, and uh, have an experience uh, uh, where uh, the museum is, uh, uh, if, if some people have disabilities, uh, finds very, uh, very, very important to touch and try to, uh, to use a computer, to use or, uh, for example, installing a, a only installing a, 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 a microprocessor on a board for some guys who unfortunately have problems, this kind of problems, and uh, um, is a word for them. So they, 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 are very um, they are very interested in this. It's an experience, a sensorial experience for, for, for them. And so we, we, de we think this is a, a uh, a point where the museum uh, must enforce and must point to. Uh, the last, and this is really the last. <laughs> uh, as I told you before, the, the, um, I would like to, to, to end uh, saying that a, a department of university information science, but um, other, other departments, um, every department is, uh, is something who describe, uh, who, uh, I mean, that, that it is something that uh, uh, points to the future because uh, uh, in a department, uh, the, the main issue is to, 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 uh, to do research. Okay, so we point to the future. On the other side, there is a museum who, who uh, a museum that, um, look to, to the past, and uh, this is uh, something who save us uh, to forget uh, what happened around our, our, our lives. Because uh, uh, technology, obviously, changes our lives. So uh, this speed of, uh, of innovation sometimes put us uh, very, very far from what we were. And so I think that is uh, uh, very important to maintain a link with the past. Uh, when, we, when we collect uh, something uh, that is really historical, uh, we, we, not only we, we, we not only describe technically, it's necessary to do this, but we try to understand who used the computer and uh, we try to find the people who use the computer or other, or other things about information science. And we try to interview and collect his experience, so maintain the history of what happened, not only uh, uh, scientifically, but also um, what happened in society. This is uh, the last thing I'd like to do, uh, to say. And, uh, uh, Hope, I hope that uh, uh, I, I, I send you some of uh, the, uh, the power I put in this work, that uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is not only easy, uh, anyway, maybe the, the contrary can be told, but it really is, is very, is very difficult, uh, is a very difficult work, uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a very, uh, I think that it's uh, uh, one, uh, one, one, one kind of, a kind of work that uh, um, has, um, has an importance for society. So uh, we, we uh, always uh, uh, meet in this uh, context, and I think that uh, it's important to uh, 
uh, every time we meet, other than collaboration, is important to point to what we are doing, because uh, the, uh, um, we have not to, to, to forget what, uh, why we are doing this kind of uh, work uh, and uh, why we are using uh, all these powers to maintain uh, the contact with history. Thank you very much. <laughs> to make some words in Italian, we are in Italy and we will talk about his collection and his project in Italian for just some minutes. So, eccoci in italiano che forse ci appartiene, almeno per quanto mi riguarda mi appartiene di più. Io vengo dalla Svizzera e l'inglese è la quarta lingua, quindi ho qualche problemino con l'inglese, però insomma, spero di essermela cavata. E volevo appunto chiedere a Marco in italiano del suo progetto e di, come, della, di cosa ne pensa della rivoluzione, della rivoluzione tecnologica e della rivoluzione che c'è stata con... Negli ultimi, nel, diciamo, nel decennio 75-85. Dunque, per stare in tema e, e, e farlo con una battuta eh, della rivoluzione tecnologica, ne penso che non me ne frega niente. Cioè, non è la rivoluzione tecnologica che mi importa, ma è la rivoluzione socioculturale che una certa tecnologia che già esisteva, perché i computer non li hanno inventati né Steve Jobs né Bill Gates e neanche Wozniak, e grazie a, a, alla popolarizzazione di queste tecnologie eh, mi interessa, perché l'ho vissuto, eh, diciamo, riconsiderare e eventualmente riuscirlo anche a comunicare soprattutto ai giovani come la società è cambiata eh, e come eh, conoscendo bene da dove si viene e poi magari anche più facile capire e riuscire di andare da qualche parte e quindi c'è questo grande cambiamento che non ha niente a che vedere con la tecnologia la tecnologia va avanti sempre comunque le macchine migliorano, la tecnologia medica, c'è tutto, vanno sullo spazio, ma la società è sempre la stessa. E, e con queste nuove tecnologie e la popolarizzazione, come dicevo prima, la visione di portare un computer a tutti gli esseri umani della Terra, e poi è una visione sbagliata perché alla fine gliene sono arrivati 4, 5, 6, eh, il mondo è veramente cambiato. È veramente cambiato che a qualcuno dice che, che schifo, si stava meglio prima, è cambiato in peggio, è cambiato in qui, è cambiato in là. Non voglio assolutamente dire che è cambiato in meglio, per me sì, ma non, non è che voglio convincere nessuno che sia cambiato in meglio, ma è cambiato, è veramente cambiato. E, e secondo me capire bene eh, perché è cambiato così tanto può magari servire ai giovani soprattutto a orientarsi per trarne vantaggio che il trarne vantaggio non è fare tutte queste robe che ci raccontano dei talenti, delle start up, dei finanzieri, dei budget, dei business plan tutte sciocchezze il computer, la tecnologia informatica di cui disponiamo ci può servire a fare tutto quello che facevamo prima, eh, semplicemente meglio, più velocemente, potendo cambiare idea più velocemente, sbagliando meno, avendo accesso a delle, alla comunicazione globale. Quindi io l'ho sempre vista così e mi piacerebbe che i giovani la vedessero così, eh, cioè come una grandissima, straordinaria, incredibile, irripetibile opportunità di impresa di stare, di entrare, stare e crescere nell'economia, nel mondo degli affari, perché tutti noi abbiamo eh, delle, degli strumenti, delle, delle armi eh, enormi che prima non esistevano e, e tutti abbiamo accesso a queste possibilità e a queste tecnologie. Sì, che è veramente un grande cambiamento perché eh, la knowledge sharing no, completa del, del mondo, l'accesso ai dati, l'accesso a internet ci ha cambiato tutto, no? perché prima dirsi qualcosa ci volevano mesi, 
anni, oggi uno cerca su Google, lo trova e, e tutto cambia, cambia, cambia il paradigma proprio, cioè, cambia completamente il paradigma, si, si uniscono i, i cervelli, è molto interessante il discorso, veramente molto molto bello, molto ben fatto. Eh, riguardo a invece andiamo a qualcosa di più tangibile nel senso fisico, eh, posso chiedere se, se mi è permesso e lecito qualcosa riguardo all'Apple 1? Certamente può e mi fa piacere che me lo chieda. L'Apple 1 effettivamente è un qualcosa su cui non solo io, io e i miei colleghi con cui diciamo, condividiamo questo, questo progetto, si dice, questa vision, questa, questo trip di, 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 diciamo, di, di avere il, prima gli strumenti per raccontare questa storia e poi ci cimenteremo per diffonderla, raccontarla. Tante volte ci siamo chiesti che cos'è per noi l'Apple 1, vabbè è stato fatto in quegli anni in cui secondo noi è cominciato tutto e quindi del 76 e quindi è proprio un po' un milestone, una pietra miliare, e però come lo è l'Ismai che ho visto sotto o lo è l'Altair e come sono, anzi che sono arrivati l'Altair anche prima e anche l'Ismai. E, e, quindi è, è, è sicuramente un pezzo come altri che certifica diciamo, l'inizio del tutto parte tutto di lì prima citavo quella rivista quel Popular Electronics del 1900 di febbraio gennaio, cos'era? Gennaio del 75 beh anche quella, quella ha proprio acceso la miccia e quindi sono pezzi importanti da quel punto di vista lì dal mio punto di vista personale, invece, come imprenditore, mi piace l'Epol 1 perché pensate cosa è venuto fuori da quel garage, da quella scheda, in termini di economia per il mondo, di occupazione, di ricchezza, di, di tutto, che sono cose che a me piacciono. Io lo so che tanti dicono, quella, l'economia, i ricchi, il capitale, ma io penso che il mondo vada avanti in un certo modo e che quelle cose lì, se fatte bene, aiutano molto lo sviluppo, il progresso anche culturale, anche sociale, dell'umanità. Quindi pensate quanto è venuto fuori da quella scheda, quindi uno può anche vederlo, l'Epol 1, come il, il Saint di Paperon de Paperoni, bah, partito Garage e Epol 1. La cosa che mi piace di più dell'Epol 1 è, da imprenditore è che era un prodotto che non serviva assolutamente a niente e che non funzionava e che dopo 15 giorni che l'avevano spedito avevano già l'Apple 2 e davano 50 dollari a chi gli rimandava l'Apple 1 di sconto se comprava l'Apple 2. E questo è bello imprenditorialmente perché ti dà la misura, soprattutto in, diciamo, magari in altri paesi, qui un po' meno, ma anche qui, che non è che la devi azzeccare al primo colpo, che se vuoi fare la Apple devi uscire subito col computer più pazzesco. No, non è vero. È che bisogna proprio crederci, è che non bisogna mollare, e però bisogna anche avere il coraggio di uscire. Quindi questi sono usciti con questa scheda che ha cambiato il mondo, ma la cosa buffa è che praticamente non serviva a niente e funzionava malissimo. Noi abbiamo ancora un sacco di difficoltà adesso a accenderlo, questo Apple 1. Una vo ogni, ogni volta è una lotta e ci dicono i, i signori che, 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 come noi, come molti di voi credo, eh, sono appassionati e lo erano già ai tempi, che era così, non è che è invecchiato, proprio a farlo partire con la musica setta che gli trasferisce in basic nel processore il, il programmino, l'iOS, cioè l'OS 0.0 no? che abbiamo in cassetta. È un dramma, ma questo è il bello. Secondo me imprenditorialmente questa è la, è la parte più bella. È la parte più bella che poi la letteratura vuole, che noi abbiamo anche la fattura, è l'Apple 1 più completo del mondo, perché ha avuto la fortuna quella macchina e noi la fortuna di trovarla 40 anni dopo, e di essere comprata 
da un ragazzo di allora che quando gli hanno detto restituiscila che ti diamo 50 dollari così prendi quell'altra ha detto no mi spiace perché questa è la prima ed è stata per questi ragazzi che adesso hanno 70-80 anni veramente come vedere un miraggio un... anche se non servivano no? e allora è stata ben conservata abbiamo tutti i pezzi con cui la... tra cui la fattura dove scrive che quel computer costava 666 dollari e 66 centesimi. E, e hanno chiesto in tanti a Gates, a questi altri, dice, perché 666 e 66? E qua, qual era il motivo? Dice, non abbiamo la più pallida idea, perché il, il numero di telefono che chiamava Steve Jobs per farsi raccontare le barzellette era 666 666. E allora l'hanno prezzato, ma dice, ma c'era il margine? Ma che margine? Non sapevo neanche che cos'era il margine. Allora, per assurdo, io ci tengo molto a dire che quella piccola azienda che in un garage a un certo punto ho fondato anch'io, è, è nata esattamente nello stesso modo. E, e tutte le aziende di successo che io conosco, dalla Ferrero alla Luxottica, e passando per Google, e chi più ne ha più ne metta, nascono così. È questo che bisogna dire ai giovani. In più adesso ci sono queste meravigliose tecnologie che consentono di partire subito con pochi soldi. Quindi io vorrei veramente che questa eh, rivoluzione informatica, eh, che io definisco culturale, che ha cambiato molto il mondo, fosse di un grandissimo stimolo, soprattutto in Italia, che ne abbiamo molto bisogno per i giovani per intraprendere. Un'ultima domanda, l'archivio digitale che state curando è proprio per portare e per raccontare tutto ai giovani o è qualcosa invece di vostro intimo o di, o di collezionistico insomma? No? Ho sbagliato? Niente, Niente di tutto questo? Allora ascoltiamo. No, l'archivio digitale che si chiama Basic Gallery eh, noi comunque partendo come dicevo prima dal garage alla fine un passettino alla volta adesso siamo un'azienda di medio grandi dimensioni, vendiamo in tutto il mondo e, e come tutte le aziende, digitali o non digitali, già quelle eh, che proprio non sapevano neanche che cos'era il digitale avevano l'archivio storico una cosa conosciuta e nota tutte le aziende hanno l'archivio amministrativo, hanno il magazzino dove hanno i prodotti che eh, producono e vendono e poi hanno un archivio, quelle cose là come l'Epol 1 che non vogliono buttare, c'è peccato buttare questo cartellone pubblicitario, questo campione di questo prodotto che, non è, che ha avuto un grandissimo successo e poi abbiamo smesso di farlo, oppure questi prototipi magnifici che non, ha, non sono entrati in produzione, i modelli. Allora tutte le aziende hanno... Eh, il cosiddetto archivio storico e quindi anche noi a un certo punto ci siamo trovati eh, con il problema eh, di eh, dire dobbiamo avere anche noi perché dal garage, il garage più grande, gli uffici, il magazzino, tutto il mondo, pezzi, con marchi comprati nuovi, quindi e come lo facciamo? Dove lo mettiamo questo eh, archivio storico? E allora ci abbiamo pensato, abbiamo detto mettiamolo, praticamente abbiamo detto lasciamolo dov'è, oppure mettiamolo nel mondo, mi importa, non sono quattro mura, però è importantissimo che noi in tempo reale sempre sappiamo dove sono le cose. Quindi in qualunque momento possiamo intervenire se ci serve, valorizzarle, usarle, vederle e nel frattempo invece di tenerle in uno scaffale che nel frattempo diventa sempre più grande e non basta mai e poi ci vuole qualcuno che lo illumini, che lo pulisca, che guardi che nessuno venga a rubare, ciascun, tutti questi pezzi saranno un po' come dire adottati da chi li ha vicini. Ma noi, come il grande fratello, sappiamo proprio con una mappa che si illumina anche a LED, tutti dove sono. Quindi abbiamo creato un archivio storico del nostro gruppo, degli articoli e della pubblicità del nostro gruppo, 
considerando come magazzino un magazzino virtuale che è grande come tutto il mondo. Ecco come le nuove tecnologie e questa famosa eh, diciamo, rivoluzione informatica può consentire di fare le cose eh, che si sono sempre fatte, di non dover inventare niente, ma essere più competitivi, più bravi e poter guadagnare di più, sfruttando in questo caso anche di più l'archivio storico. Perfetto, fantastico. Ringrazio Marco. Grazie davvero per la presenza e per la magnifica esposizione. E proviamo ancora una volta. So we try again to connect with Mark. Can you hear us? Uh, yes. Oh, wow, finally. <laughs> so I would like to, to ask you the same questions uh, we already discussed about here. And it's uh, something like uh, your museum and uh, What impact is having on the public your museum in San Francisco? Okay, I would like to know that your museum as in San Francisco with the public, uh, how you interact with the public coming to see your museum. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe from here you can understand better? Uh, oh, okay, wonderful. <laughs> it was something, it was, uh, I was too, too far away from the computer. Uh, I would like to know if, uh, not if, sorry, but how you interact with the public coming to your museum, which impact it has on the, on the public coming and on the community of San Francisco? visitors a year, of which uh, more than, I think it's close to half, are um, from out, outside the area in the uh, United States. Um, so we're, sorry, let me try, I'm getting a lot of echo. Sorry? I think. Uh, so, uh, ah, okay. Anyway, we're, in a sense, we're kind of the community center for Silicon Valley, or the visitor center. Because many people come to Silicon Valley and they want to go to, you know, the big companies, Google, with this just staff, that are walking distance from us, Apple and Facebook and so on. But there's really not much you can do with this company. So, and, sometimes walk on the campus, but there's nothing for <coughs> So we are, you know, both the history of the county, but also a place that people, when they're traveling to the area, can kind of quickly get a feel for uh, the entire high-tech industry. Uh, so we have our permanent exhibition with Revolution in the first competitive new computing. Um, that's 2,200 square And then we have a newer um, software exhibit, which um, is in the social both of software in several, several different content. It focuses on the people using software as most of the people. And then we, we also have a huge number Uh, rentals that we, oh, we have about one a day on uh, average. So there's going to be conferences, some big, some small, that uh, rent the space of the museum. And that brings in another, uh, I'm forgetting that, uh, but it brings us up more than 200,000 people a year yeah. uh, that, that walk through the doors. So that's the way that we're kind of a community facility. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But uh, I would like to tell you that uh, we don't listen very well because of uh, the, connect the connectivity. So uh, we understood everything, but I will explain later. I will try to, to, to tell the public, uh, to, 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 to tell the public in Italian what you did, what you, what you said. Uh, the last question is about uh, when your museum were created and something about the history in uh, the time frame, I mean. Museum actually grew out of the uh, Boston Computer Museum, which started in Boston on the east, on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, 37 years ago. And uh, that was started originally as a, an in house museum for digital equipment. So Gordon Bell and his wife started this, you know, in many companies, just a, a little exhibit of that history. That grew into a public museum downtown Boston that ran for a number of years and was one of the first, probably the first, uh, computer museum of any size in the world. Um, and then in mid-90s, uh, Justa, who's our other co-founder, in Silicon Valley, and he started thinking of startups. Uh, he had been teaching at Stanford and saw that in computer science course, they had stopped teaching. When he got his doctorate, did teach about the, some of the great people and events that had all been taken away. So he started to bring objects into his classroom and talk about them, and it gave him ideas. Yeah. So then he connected with the Boston which was starting to have um, financial trouble. And so they made a partnership and basically the, what is now the Computer History Museum in California gradually absorbed Boston Computer Museum. And Gwen Bell was the first CEO in California. Gordon Bell is still on the um, so it was really kind of absorption or a merger. And in California, the museum started very, um, not really open to the public, in the late 90s. It was close to just storage at a, actually, NASA at, the, at their site up the field with a little bit of public exhibit. And gradually, since then, um, it's become a full public museum. Um, so in 2003 or so, we bought a building, which was the former sales headquarters of Silicon Graphics. And uh, in, let's see, 2011, we opened our permanent exhibition, the one I described. And that's sort of when you could say we were yeah, sorry, 2010. Yeah. Um, but that's when we were really, you know, fully open as a public museum. Um, the way the Boston Museum had been put up considerably larger. So it's really only been seven years. You know, with a full set of exhibitions, um, we had had events before. And then, um, so I, I had the 
internet history program, which I had actually started uh, researching the history of the path of CERN in Geneva. I lived for 10 years in France near Geneva. And um, in 2008, I started the internet history program. And so we've added um, topic areas. So history's been going 10 years. Then we added the Center for Software History a couple of years ago. This was the Center for Business History, the Exponential Center. And um, our education program is expanding a lot. And we just got a new CEO a little over a month ago, uh, Anna Lewin, and uh, we're preparing for the, the next phase. Bye, bye, bye. bye. And <laughs> so I, I will finish the session in Italian, I think, because it's better in Italian, but we have international guests here, <laughs> maybe in English. I leave the word to, to Elia to close the session, and I thank you for being here, and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you to you all, to our guests. Uh, it was a pleasure to have uh, such a guest to this event. This is the third edition of this event, and uh, we are increasing the quality of uh, people that uh, uh, are our guests. Um, I am uh, the president of the uh, Museo Piemontese dell'Informatica, a uh, non-profit cultural association that uh, want to open uh, a museum, a computer history museum in Turin in particular. And uh, we are working to join our forces with other uh, entities. Uh, and uh, we are really, really lucky to have uh, Marco Boglione, for example, or uh, Yves Bolognini, Svetozar, Nilovic, Marco Kistanini, uh, Mark Weber, of course, from the uh, United States <laughs> via video call, and of, of course, <laughs> Stefania Calcagna that uh, uh, has moderated this uh, round table. <laughs> and uh, I hope you will enjoy uh, as me, uh, this event. And uh, th there is another day, and uh, this evening we have a, a DJ set uh, to um, to, for for uh, crowdfunding uh, activities uh, for the museum, because uh, um, we had uh, some problems with uh, um, our uh, um, our um, activity, uh, in particular with uh, our uh, building uh, for the collection, uh, our warehouse. Uh, and uh, I hope you can enjoy this uh, dinner and this uh, evening and. Uh, Tomorrow, <laughs> I hope uh, to see you again. <laughs> uh, thank you so much to you all, and uh, enjoy. <laughs>